Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing really well. So today it is part two of a QA. and a I've done um, a QA and a probably about, I don't know, three to four weeks ago. If you haven't watched that, you can watch that down below. So I thought I'll do a part two. I'll answer some more questions because I feel one video isn't enough to answer. I get hundreds of questions. Um, so I just didn't feel one video was enough. So I thought I'd do another one. I have a coffee. I have a different coffee today. I've got a flat white from McDonald's. Do you know what? A McDonald's flat white is very, very underrated. It's the cheapest, although it did used to be one ninety nine, and it's now £2.9. So it has gone up, but still the cheapest. And it's good. It's good. Um, so I'm going to zip on this while I answer some of your questions. So I asked over on Instagram um, for you to send some questions in. If you don't follow me on Instagram, my handle is just here. So give me a cheeky follow on that. Um, I post various things. I post um, outfit of the days, um, pictures of when we travel, um, bits of everything really. So, okay, so let's get into the questions. I have, I have 15 questions here. 15 questions, I'm gonna have a sip of coffee. Question number one, let's start off with a nice simple one. How tall am I? I'm five foot five. I am five foot five. Um, Although I'm not quite sure if I'm shrinking as I get older because my children, Anastasia, my eldest daughter, is now taller than me. How is that even possible? And Atticus, my son, is, to be honest, not a huge amount far off. He is like probably that much smaller than me. So I think I'm shrinking as I get older, but I am five foot five next question i liked this one number two what is your death row meal um main dessert and drink okay there's a lot of main meals i could choose from there's a lot of main meals i like obviously but you know what it'd be my death row meal would be a really really good spaghetti bolognese and when i say a spaghetti bolognese i don't just mean like a standard i mean the tastiest spaghetti bolognese you can get but with tagliatelle i much prefer it like that um yeah so that would be my main my dessert would have to be some type of cheesecake cheesecake is my favorite dessert I think we'd go for, after a spag bowl, I think we'd go for probably a New York cheesecake. Like a creamy, vanilla-y cheesecake and drink. It would be... Oh, am I allowed to? Because I'd want a Diet Coke with my dinner. Then I'd want to finish off with a cup of tea. So, can I have two drinks? If not, I think I'm going to have to go with a cup of tea. But the cup of tea ain't going to go good with the spag bowl. But yeah, that's what it'd be. It'd be spag bowl followed by a New York cheesecake and a cup of tea, but if possible, a Diet Coke also. Okay, number three. What are you most proud of in your life? I didn't really have to think about this. Um, I am most proud of my children. They are, if I was on my deathbed now, and someone said to me, you know, what was your biggest achievement? What are you most proud of, of what you have achieved? It would be my children because they are such good kids. Um, they're so kind, both so kind. They're both good people. They both have a strong sense of what is right and wrong. Um, regardless of what, they do in life what their job is or regardless of what their job will be um that's ultimately irrelevant it is how they are as people and they are good kind loving children and i couldn't ask for more than that so they are the the thing the thing that i am most proud of in my life and that would be my answer every time my children 
Um, number four, how do you deal with being a single mum? I get asked this a lot. Um, I'll have a sip of my coffee first. Is there really such a thing as dealing with being a single mum? Because you actually have no option. Um, if If that is if they're the cards that you have been dealt with in life, be that through your own choice or not, then you just do it. You don't think, how am I gonna deal with this? How am, how am I dealing with this? You, you just do it. To a certain point, um, you are on autopilot. Um, you are in survival mode most of the time because you are responsible for another person you are responsible for their happiness their health their safety their development their whole being and at the same time as it's a lot um it's also very very fulfilling too um oh i'm having to think deep here so the question really how do you deal with it i guess my answer would be i deal with it by being very very practical very practical um And a lot of the time being on autopilot to enable me to get everything done. Um, I am, as well as being a full-time single mum, I'm also the breadwinner. I'm also the breadwinner. I'm the cleaner. I'm the cook. As every other single mum is. You know, and... I'm not going to deny it's a lot. It's a lot. But because I'm in that autopilot mode most of the time, I don't really... I guess I just probably don't allow myself to dwell on it. I just, I suppose, get on with it. And I think that is what most single mums do. You know, and I always in life, always, um, I mean, I get questions as well asking how do I stay so positive, blah, blah, blah. And I really, really do believe and I really do try. And don't get me wrong, I have days when, you know, things don't seem so positive as well because I'm only human as much as the next person. But I I always think you should count your blessings. I always think about what you you should thank yourself. Thank you should be thankful for what you have got rather than constantly thinking about what you haven't got. Um because things in life could be a lot 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 worse. Um so that is my answer to the question of how do I deal with being a single mum? Okay. Next question. Have you read Anna's book yet? Oh, I'm so excited. My girl's an author. She is an author. A book is coming out in June, I believe. Pre-order it now on Amazon. Daisy's relationship status. Um, I have read, in answer to your question, <laughs> I have read, I've read one chapter of it. I read one chapter of it quite a while back when I was in Manchester. Um, and it was so, so good. I am so, so proud of her. I cannot wait to read the whole book. Uh, she's just done... Anastasia has just done amazingly well and just adding an all you know adding you know an author to her list of things that she has done is just you know it's amazing and I could not be prouder so I can't wait to read the whole book but yes I have read one chapter so far um next number six oh, we live in the same town Julie what do you think is the town's best feature I like this so I live in Wellingborough in Northamptonshire. Um, now, I quite like the town I live in. Um, 
it's home to me, it's our base, and to me, it has a lot of good features. So I think I would say the best feature, I would say, is its history. Now, a few weekends ago, we went on such bit uncomfortable here. we went on such a long walk around our town we actually done eight miles yes i walked eight miles and atticus bless his heart he's like a little historian if you if you watch my vlogs you will know he, he you know he loves his history and he was telling me so much history about wellingborough which i did not know and it has a lot of history here one way or another and so i would say its feature is its history we um wellingborough used to have a zoo we used to have a zoo like up the high street and um a long long time ago and the zoo's um like gate sort of thing is still there um there's lots of like you know nods to its history here and there there's some really old buildings as well which i really like um i like wellingborough i'm sure you could probably get some people that think you know wellingborough is this that and the other um but for me personally and we all have to speak about how we personally find things I like Wellingborough. Um, so to me, I would say my answer to that question is, its best feature would be its history. Number seven, why did you start a YouTube channel? P.S. I think you're a great YouTuber. Thank you. Um, why did I start? Okay, um, I started a channel because part of me was like, why not? I thought I had like an inkling I might be quite good at it. I also as well wanted to show, I guess on some level I wanted to show the real me because previous to starting my channel, I'd appeared in so many of Anastasia's videos. And I think in Anastasia's videos, I somehow developed a certain, if we say character um, and I wanted to I think I wanted to be more myself I wanted to do a channel I wanted to portray myself more I felt I could do a channel that was just about me and my life um, so that was a part of it as well um, like I said I had an inkling it would do quite well so I thought, you know, this could be a job that I could do that would work around Atticus and his schooling, which I still am so, so, so grateful for. Um, you know, it, it's brought me so many opportunities um, and it, you know, provides us with a good life and I will never, ever regret starting YouTube. So my reason for starting would be um because i thought i'd be quite good at it there was a big part of me that was like why not and because also i wanted to portray my real self rather than being i feel maybe a bit of a character um type thing um so they were my reasons why i started a youtube channel um and how long has it been now i feel like it's been it's definitely been two years. It must be two years since I started my channel. Um, okay, so a bit along the same vein, question number eight. What inspires me to think up new YouTube content? Good question. I like this question. Um, it can be hard sometimes. Um, I try to make videos along the lines of what I would like to watch. But if it's something I'd like to watch, then other people like watching it too. So I try and think what would I like to watch? Um, I mean, there's lots of classic videos that I put in along the way, like, um, you know, things like, for example, a Primark haul, um, what I know is popular and I know people enjoy them. I love watching Primark hauls. Um, Day in the Lifes, I like watching Day in the Lifes. You get an insight into somebody's life, their real life. Um, so I try and, how do I get inspiration? I think I, I I do and I try and create what comes what comes naturally and just what I feel that I want to do more than what I think I should do where my 
YouTube channel is concerned, I work with more what I feel I want to do. Um, it's like, if I was like thinking so much, I could think, right, I'm going to start doing challenges. I'm going to start doing, you know, 24 hour, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I don't feel that that will portray the real me because I am 49 and I don't feel it just wouldn't be me it just wouldn't be me so i go with with my channel my inspiration comes mm -hmm. from what i feel i want to create there you go okay another sip of coffee this next question is such a good one number nine if i had to give up tea or coffee for one year what would it be this was hard when i was thinking about this if i had to give up tea or coffee now my regular viewers will know, you know how much I love my coffee, right? But I also love cups of tea and I can't imagine not having a cup of tea. So this was a really, really difficult question. Probably the most difficult question. And I would actually give up coffee. I'd actually give up coffee. If I could only drink one of them for one year, I would give up coffee and it would be tea that I would keep. I cannot imagine not having a cup of tea. Even though I love my coffee, I actually don't drink as much as I used to. Um, I've got it down, to be honest, before I leave the house in the mornings, I've got it down to two cups and I'd literally at one point have something like four or five. Um, so the answer would be, I would keep tea. There you go. Okay, next question. B&M or home bargains? Like this. Again, difficult one, tricky one, but I had to keep one. I'm gonna keep home bargains, which is where I'm going in a minute, actually. I'm gonna keep home bargains love b&m obviously but if i had to choose one yeah home bargains i think their cleaning range is really really good and they sell lots of other little bits as well which b&m don't i'm keeping home bargains what we're saying are you agreeing with me um question number 11 would you rather have 10 uk trips per year or one exotic holiday good question I'll read it again. So would you rather have 10 UK trips in a year or just one exotic holiday? That's a really good question. I think I'm gonna say, I love the UK. As much as I love going abroad, I love the UK. There are some beautiful places in the UK and there's still lots that we haven't visited. So I am gonna say, I will take the 10 trips, the 10 UK trips in a year over one exotic holiday that's what i'm gonna say uk has some wonderful wonderful places um and still so many places for us to visit so i am saying 10 uk trips okay next question i love this would you ever write your own book hell yeah i would love to write a book um can i see it happening not really um but i would absolutely love to write someone's going to park up no they're not i would love to write my own book um i think i i could fill a book i could definitely fill a book um i think it'd be very very interesting i think it would be a really interesting read and yes i would absolutely love to write my own book next question number 13 do you ever get lonely um now i don't I think there's a difference between feeling lonely and feeling alone. So I don't ever feel lonely. And I know the reason for that, because I love my own company. I love to be on my own and I love my own company. But do I feel alone at times? Yes. Um, and I think that would be because I am doing it all myself, basically. Um, and that can be, that can make you feel quite isolated and alone. Um, so in answer to the question, do I feel lonely? No, I don't feel lonely. Because once you learn to love your own company, that feeling goes 
once you can fill your own time and be at peace with yourself that lonely feeling doesn't really exist anymore but I can and do feel alone at times um, so that would be my answer to that um, question 14 this is good and I don't think I've actually ever answered this before um, who did you have as birthing partners as a single parent um, so yeah I've never answered this before so when Anastasia was born in the year 2000 I was a single parent and my birthing partner was my wonderful mum um, she was right beside me all the way when Anastasia came into the world um, she was the best birthing partner she kept me calm she kept me just everything I felt safe and she was there for me before and she was there for me all the time after um, and she was a great birthing partner so it was my mum Anastasia's nan um, when Anastasia was born and then when Atticus was born again I was a single mum and my birthing partner was actually my cousin um, my cousin Lizzie actually on the day he was born which was April the 16th his 10th birthday very very soon it was actually her birthday um, so she was so good she was such a good birthing partner and even though it was her birthday and she had things to do she was there for me um i remember she went home because my labor hadn't like super super started strong and she'd gone home to like get a quick shower sort herself out get a few bits done and then when she came back my labor had progressed and she was with me all the way um and she was such a good birthing partner and bless her she done she done me this little photo album of all photos she took um of Atticus coming into the world so that was wonderful so I ha I was very very lucky very very blessed and I had even though I didn't have the traditional partner with me at the time of giving birth to my children I had two wonderful birth um birth partners and I can't ask for more than that so they were amazing so thank you thank you thank you to both of you um and final question number 15 what is your a nice simple one to finish off with what is your favorite song of the moment um now i have this habit i have got a song in my head but I've got this habit, right, of thinking when I hear a certain song for the first time, I've got a habit of thinking it's a new song, that it's a new release. And I'll say to like Anastasia, oh, I love this song, I love this song, have you heard this? She'll like, mum, that's been out ages. And then this particular song, I had it on, um, on my Spotify the other night in the car, and even Atticus said, mum, this has been out ages. And I'm like, has it? But anyway, my favourite song of the moment is Rag and Bone Man with, oh, he's done, a, he's done a collab with a DJ. Oh, what's his name? Oh, God, not David Guetta. Anyway, I just know the name will come to me as soon as I, like, come off camera. Anyway, Rag and Bone and a DJ, Kelvin Harris. Kelvin mm. Harris have done a song called um, Lovers in a Past Life. That is my favourite song of the moment. Um, let me know if that is a new release, if that has just come out, or whether that's probably been out months. Um, it probably has. God, this car park is full now. When I parked up, it was empty. It is now full. I feel like this has been quite a long video. I've answered 15 of your questions. I hope I've put some in there and um, what I've never answered before, um, which I think is important when you do these sort of things. So I hope you have enjoyed. Um... Do you know what i'll probably do a part three at some point there's always so many questions and i love that so thank you very much for sending your questions into instagram and i hope you enjoyed and i will see you very very soon for another video